Ooh, what's up guys, of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with Jules Truel, of course, the Scarender. And yeah, we're actually hitting up 300 games uploaded this time, and I decided to take one of those games that I thought was genuinely interesting against Greenscraft in Elithio Elite 4. And um, yes, you guys may or may not know, I did make it, I even got 9 orbs for the hell of it, but then life found a way to screw me over. Uh, a lot of things have worked to go my way, and uh, basically, I was forced to work a lot of hours, so I didn't have the time to battle, at least not enough to, uh, how to put it, to lose. And it came down to the, um, sadly, the fundamentals that I didn't have the time to battle all these guys. Um, many of these guys live in the USA, and sadly, we actually, since it was seven hours apart, uh, I was usually asleep when they got home for battles, and uh, when I wake up, it's the way that they went down to sleep. And obviously, that just didn't work, and weekends are still weekends for, for these guys too, of course, and that's why... <laughs> or really, that's the reason it didn't go as well as I hoped for. Uh, but anyway, this battle was generally good, I thought this was a very, very interesting match, and it's against an opponent that I have a huge respect for. Uh, I have a lot of issues against him because he's generally strong and very very good at predictions and it came down to battle of minds really in this game because we're both sand teams! So Greenscraft was definitely the one I was looking forward to go up against in the Elite Four and you know I was really really um, arrogant going in um, we had a lot of jokes before going in here and basically I knew that um, you know like I said, it's gonna be a battle of the minds. I did expect him to have a similar team. He might have a bit stronger team than I have, but that's hardly gonna matter because, like I said, it's the battle of the brawn and uh, the minds. And yeah, just look at the team here. We do have a similar Pokemon with the Proud Dog, Escadrille, and Southlands. I won't leave any comments on that. But Garchomp is one of his Pokemon, and Garchomp with the Mega Evolution get, of course, the Sand Force. Really, really tough. Florius can wall a good chunk of my team. And explode, which I did not see coming. Uh, I don't see it as a threat, but at the same time, if I be in catch guard by it, it's gonna take out something. And uh, that's something I don't want. That's generally something I don't want. I know the Ditto is my go to card here, being able to outspeed the majority of his team. And of course, Tranitar um, needs to set up the sand. I do have two sandstorm. No, actually, did not take me with me. Pound on. So Tranitar is my. Sandstorm setter, so I'm gonna rely on my opponent actually to set up the set with the Powdown. That was my idea, um, and just basically try to uh, use him to the best of my abilities and uh, hope that eventually that I find some kind of footing. Now, for a lead here, I did either suspect him to start with the Powdown or Florges, so I'm basically myself gonna start with Rodan, thinking that at least I can outspeed the majority of his Pokemon he's gonna start off with and get something hurt really bad. Uh, so, with really all of this in mind guys, let's go! So yeah, starting off, you know, I was really nervous going in because I had such a crappy day um, with I lost a lot of times going in here, so I felt that, you know, I need to overshoot a lot here. And he's actually gonna start with Explode, catch me off guard very, very early on. And I'm basically forced here to try to shut him down with a Thunder Wave, hoping to live um, Specs Boom Burst with a felt was kinda obvious here, or rather that was the only way I saw him playing that. Um, I don't have Focus Sash, but hey, Rotom just like, nah, -uh, not gonna go down, we're not doing this, and gonna go for Rest and basically hope for Paralyzation. I know it's kind of bad relying on that, but at the same time, I was in a position where this thing is gonna get far off, no matter the situation, so Paralyzation is definitely important, he do get fully paralyzed. And, you know, Scrafty, I'm sorry, I really am. Um, at the same time here, I do go for Volt Switch. Um, I'm not going to do any rigid, real damage on it, and I knew that. Uh, so I'm going to go to Rex, and basically set up a Sandstorm. And the only reason I did this was because Rex is Assault Vested, so I knew I can take a Boom Burst, I can deal with the Boom Burst. Uh, but I do make a strange play here, and I say strange because I did decide to go for an Avalanche here hoping that he would switch out to his god chomp, he was actually staying, not getting fully paralyzed, and I ending up really, really hurting my bricks. And that's bad, that's bad, because he's my only sand setter, while my opponent has the pout on, um, I knew that Brex is kinda dead here, there's not a lot happening, and he's gonna go to his god chomp, knowing that, I knew also that 
I can't really switch into anything, I have to bar this guy off. And I felt, like I said, really bad about this because I did, didn't did have anything for the god jump, he was just too strong. And he's gonna show me the earth power, which definitely makes sure that he's a special set, or so I thought. I actually thought that I'd take this situation and steal it from him and go into, oh yeah, the ditto. And basically here, I do find out the god, um, of course, the Draco Meteor. Uh, Earth Power and Iron Head. Now, Iron Head felt like a good move because I was definitely predicting him to go to his Flordius because Flordius doesn't, of course, is immune to the Drag or Draco Meteor. And we're gonna take this guy straight out of it, and that's great. That is really all I needed. And of course, now I'm locked to that move, and that's really bad. And he's gonna go to Stoutland. Uh, I am in no position of really, really losing my gauge as of right now, so I'm just gonna fall off my Rotom. And I knew that I couldn't take a uh, return, there was just no way. And with that damage, I should probably, you know, predicted that with me surviving that, that this probably is a jolly set with crit and all. Uh, I did not make that call right there and then, and uh, as of that, Rotom is gonna go down. And uh, I'm basically going to Kaiser, which of course now can come in freely. Now, I should probably should have gone for Kaiser to begin with because, of course, I could, he would just have risked a lot going for a superpower. Uh, anyway, he's gonna choke his power down. I do go for an Iron Head here. And I score a crit here. And um, that is, I think that's resisted damage. Or, no, that actually hits neutral. So I do decide to go for an EQ, predicting him to go for Self Rocks. Um, or basically, I have no real reason to use my uh, Excadrill as of right now. So, he's gonna show me a slack off, sadly, and it does recover more than I actually do damage on him. As the Sandstorm has died, I do decide here to actually, you know, he's definitely gonna go for the EQ here now. So, I'm just gonna go to Mythos. And Mythos is the stall set um, Sigilith with, of course, the Flame War, because I really needed the Flame War procedural damage as of this battle. And I'm just gonna go Psycho Shift here. I have a similar situation, of course, with the Rune Master, with his Sigilith burning everything on his team, or my team. He's just gonna go for Whirlwind straight on at it, and I get that. I think that's a very good call to make. I am forced to go back to Kaiser, and even with the burn damage, uh, Earthquake is not enough to kill it, and I knew that. I'm just gonna, you know, really escape yet again, hoping that it goes for, of course, the monster that is the EQ. But yes, um, we're now in a position where I wish I had a real attacking move besides the sword power, and I'm predicting him to go for. Um, um, slack off this time, there's no real reason for him not to do that and or rather as of I go for um, Cosmic Power. Now I was really hoping that a stored power with one Cosmic Power up would do some kind of damage to it. Uh, with the burn damage and all I was really thinking that you know it's gonna get whittled down, it's hard to kill but at the same time it can't really kill me. Stored power does around 20% and I mean that's fine and that's good to know against the next situation that's gonna up come here. Now, I do get forced out yet again into Kaiser, and now he is actually in range where I think an EQ could kill him. So I do, I think I realized that that was probably my best bet, but he's definitely seeing that situation coming. And go is to God's Jump, and of course, God Jump is just too tough, and is gonna take this EQ quite easily. And um, sadly, here I actually decide to switch out, and I I think I did that because God Jump naturally outspeed with his speed investment. And I'm gonna go to Oh Yeah! Hoping for an Earth Power. And um, this was a very, very bad prediction with my part because he's definitely seeing right through that. He's gonna go for Draco, killing my God Jump. And uh, that's one winning condition out of here. And that's. I'm not gonna lie here. That was a very, very bad call. And I should not have made that. You just have fodder off extra real from that position because the Ditto just has much more force behind it. Now, I'm just gonna go straight on add it to my Siglip here and set up Cosmic Power. I know I'm in kind of a position where I can just can set up. And uh, he's gonna go for another head. Sadly here, he does score the crit, which puts me in a kind of a bad position, and I'm forced to go to a Psycho Shift. I should probably gone for, um, to be honest here, to go for another Cosmic Power, volume up, because now I'm actually setting on timer, and I am forced to roost up after this, and he just see this as a potential situation. Hell, I should have probably seen that as a potential situation, and uh, 
While I do go for the Roost there, I think he'll just keep going for attacking and basically try to uh, basically lose his own guard jump due to the burn damage. Now he will go for Draco and then I will definitely eat that up because, well, it's a Draco and uh, he only used it once so it's not going to do a whole lot of damage and I think it was really getting real stressed here because the Siglith here is really, really walling him. So he does decide to hard switch out here and uh, yeah. I, I do get it, I do get it, you don't want to make sure that I set up another another layer of, um, what do you call it, the cosmic power. Now, I did go for Roost a second time, and uh, looking back at it, that was probably not the best decision, because even with the burn damage here, I was thinking, you know, I should be in range of killing him with the stole power. And so did <laughs> Green Scarf to do, but no, 1 HP, hey, how about that? Yay! I was so pissed at that, I was so pissed at that, because that is just the worst. And while the power goes down here, like I said before, his stealthlet is jolly, and what do you know, he's gonna go to his x drill now, and um, you know, that's cool, I guess, he's gonna go for an iron head, I am able to live this, because I am still a stealthlet after all, and I just go for super power, finish that up, and um, yeah, his last Pokemon now is um, yeah, he has a Southland and he has a burned guard chomp that dies in the switching. And uh, I think that's it. I think we're in a kind of a fine situation here. But like I said, he's gonna go to his Southland. I have nothing really resistant to the return, and I'm just gonna fire off my own Southland because, like I said, that his set is Yolly, mine is not. And um, just gonna go for Mitos just to really get off uh, burn damage here. But the return is actually enough to kill because I am speed invested and not defensive so my last Pokemon is Kaiser and while I do the resist return I don't think I'm able to live that we will not find that out because it scores a crit and uh, that is a Stoutland sweep at the wrong side of the <laughs> wrong side of the plane here and the Greenscraft will win here and uh, yeah that's tough I was really frustrated about this to be honest but at the same time, I won't really deny that I made some bad calls throughout the battle. I did sack the Ditto, I did play kind of strange with the Sigilith. And, you know, looking back at this game, I was really not... I was playing good at the beginning, you know, did some over-predictions to get momentum. But halfway through the battles, I just stopped predicting. And I think as a direct result to that Greenscraft, they definitely got the upper hand here and... Uh, could play it safe rather well here to the end and um, yeah I mean that's my fault it really is we did have very very or a lot of exchanges of uh, crits which definitely made this battle in both in both favors really kind of badly but I think I got the short end of it in the end because of this crits going on um, definitely against God Chum's Iron Head that that crit definitely made it play more defensively with my Sigilith, which is definitely something you shouldn't do. Um, and I should never have burned everything on his team, um, or should definitely not burn the guard, I would just keep going for Cosmic Powers. Because going for a Willow instead of a Cosmic Power was the reason I couldn't kill the Southland or the Hippowdon. And as a direct result of that, he did pull up that Whirlwind, and that was GG. Since, like I said, he's had a Jolly Southland, which outspeed everything my team, and that was real, real tough. And really also just to have it said, had it been, you know, your everyday battle, I would have loved to upload this in that fashion. I I do upload this because I think it was a really, really good game. Through and through and very, very evenly matched between us. But it was kind of, um, it was tough since it was um, a more serious battle than the previous one were. And um, this was actually my only battle against Greenscraft. I had a backup plan to deal with him, um, basically a counter team or a counter idea for my team. But we didn't time each other, and as a direct result of that, we didn't have a rebel after this. But yeah, Greenscraft, I really want to thank you for this battle. I thought it was a lot of fun. Like I said, it was because it was a bit serious that made me, yeah, made me kind of mad. But at the same time, you know, I won't deny that I actually played very, very bad at the end there. And you were the honest winner since you played much more evenly than I did. And uh, that is what is required for a longer battle with the same kind of theme. It really is. So, Green Shrifted, Genie Man, I really want to thank you for that. And for everybody else, I want to thank you for watching, of course. Uh, make sure to leave a like if you like this battle. And if you, you know, haven't been subscribed to this battle, make sure to do that too. And remember, the sky is the limit. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.